All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the community conversation on bullying. Um, my name is Jamie. I'm with Defeat the Label. My colleague Christine is joining us from Defeat the Label, and we are so excited this morning. Uh, we're excited to welcome the Munich Foundation Director Pam Harlan, um, one of our amazing partners on this, and Mr. Kevin Epling, who will be our MC, who is an anti-bullying advocate, a parent advocate, and a superhero. Um, and I'm excited to welcome you all. And with that, uh, we have some amazing speakers for you today. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Kevin so he can do introductions and uh, introduce everybody. So thank you so much. So you're muted. There you go. See, it's not a Zoom without someone saying you're mute, you're on mute. So that's is where we are. You know, I, I'm battling the trifecta of a mute or a, a, a Zoom call. I have tree trucks outside my house. I have a whiny dog because it's raining out and I'm kind of fighting the head cold. So welcome to Zoom, people. This is the ninth annual Zoom conversation, uh, community conversation on bullying. And Jamie and Christine have done a wonderful job, as in years past, of bringing us a, a group of speakers to bring you information um, that you can then implement in your own school or your community. You know, and it's not just about bullying. It is about all of the factors that touch on bullying. Bullying leads to other factors. So there are many, many things I've always said, I think, Bullying is kind of like an octopus with uh, 50 tentacles and on the end of every tentacle, there's 50 more tentacles because it reaches in to every fa fabric of our lives. And this is not something that is just in the schools. We see it in the workplace. We see it in elder care. It is across the spectrum. So that's one of the things we kind of touch on is bring speakers from uh, a wide range to, to bring you great information in uh, this this half a day and stay with us. This is also going to be recorded. You can come back and you can watch this uh, later on. We also invite you to, throughout the day, add your questions in the chat and we will do our best to, to answer all those questions either through the live stream or afterwards. So it is a conversation. We need to hear from you as much as you are looking to hear from us. We have a, a great agenda um, today so that if you look at the, the agenda, it's in your chat. You know, we're going to talk with uh, Rashida Williams is going to kick us off today. Then we're going to talk with uh, Sean Thacker about his story. And then Frankie Baghdad about neuro, neurodiversity in our classrooms. And then we're talking with Carrie DeWitt about the state of Matt's Law in the state of Michigan. And when we talk about that, even though it's Michigan, you need to think about what it is. If you are outside Michigan, how can you use some of those tools to look at your own law? And then, of course, we will wrap it up with a teacher's roundtable, a teacher year roundtable with Pam Harlan, one of our partners for this. And Pam is with us. And Pam, would you like to say anything to everyone who has gathered today? There I am. Hi, Kevin. And hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here representing MIMIC and the MIMIC Foundation. Um, such an important conversation uh, that needs to be said. So I concur with you 100%, Kevin, that, um, you know, we can't, we can talk about this enough if we can ever fight, get this finished, right? But until we get this fight over, we need to keep the conversation going. And that's the importance of today's um, conference. So I look forward to all of our participants. Um, I thank the speakers as well. And I'm gonna go off camera and let's get this sucker going. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Pam. Thank you always for, for your support and Mimic support over the years. And just for those of you who have joined us and you don't know who I am, just let me let me let you uh, know my background. Um, I'm not an educator. I am a parent who pretty much got drafted into what I call the war on bullying after I lost my son to suicide in 2002 after a hazing incident at his school, which kind of drove me to find 
people who knew a lot more than I did at the time and learn from them and to find multiple mentors who would help me find a new path in my new life in in moving myself forward. My real job is, as I said, I'm a storyteller. I'm a video producer. And over the last 20 years, I have never found a person who does not have a story about bullying. They have either been the target or actually have been the bully and really now fully understand, you know, what that means years later and what they've caused. So that old adage, you know, we get over it really doesn't work because we just bury it and it will always come back sometimes at inopportune moments, but it's always there. We carry it with us. I have found one of the things over the years that I feel is very important is student empowerment. You give the students that power to, to lead us because we are thinking sometimes older ways and they have new ideas. They are the ones in the classroom. They are the ones in the hallways. We need to actually learn from them.